This is going to be part two of Offended. Turn your Bibles to King James Bibles to John chapter 6. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter here. After these things, John chapter 6 verse 1. After these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. So evidently he was healing people, right? And Jesus went up into a mountain and there sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? You know, so you got... A lot of people there, right? And everybody's probably been there a while and they're all hungry. And so he's asking, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. And for those of you that don't know what a penny was a day's wage for an unskilled laborer back in those days. So you're talking, you know, 200 days of wages. I mean, and they're like, that's not even enough that everybody just takes a little, you know, so that's, there's a lot of people there. Uh, Let's see, one of his, verse eight, one of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. The men were about five thousand. What, there was no women there? There was no children there? Of course there was. How many? The Bible doesn't say. So, how many people were there? Maybe 10, 12,000? We don't know. But there was 5,000 men. And a couple of loaves of bread and a couple of fishes is just not going to do it, right? Verse 11. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples and disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Twelve baskets. Think of the twelve tribes of Israel, right? And uh, I've heard it said that five is a representative number of grace in the Bible. So five barley loaves of bread, Jesus, the bread of heaven, right? Oh, uh, let's see, verse 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth that prophet should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. And when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over the sea toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. And the sea arose by reason of a great wind that blew. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and walking and drawing nigh unto the ship, and they were afraid. But he saith unto them, it is, a, it is I, be not afraid. Then they willingly received him into the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. That's interesting. They're out in the middle of the water. Jesus walks to them, and all of a sudden the ship's at the land. Hmm. The day following, when the people who stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there save the one whereunto his disciples were entered, were entered, 
and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit, there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, camest thou hither? Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. In other words, they're just following him around for to get fed. You know? Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Oh yeah, Jesus has been sealed by God the Father himself. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them, Listen carefully. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. And who did God the Father send? His Son, Jesus. This is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. They said therefore unto him, What sign showest thou then that we may see and believe thee? What dost thou work? Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread, is, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. See, the God the Father gives the sheep to the shepherd. Verse 38. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Huh. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Jesus is going to raise us up at the last day. Where does it say the before the beginning of the tribulation? You know, the pre-trib rapture. All right, verse 41. The Jews then murmured at him, the Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he saith, I come down from heaven? Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me. Listen to this carefully. Maybe John Calvin read this when he uh, said he believed in election, right? No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So if God the Father doesn't draw you, you can't come to him, I guess. That's what it sounds like to me. I took English in college for a couple semesters and... What can I tell you? It is written in the prophets, 
that they shall uh, be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat man in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. So, do you know to this day the uh, Jewish Talmud, which is the Jews' commentary by the rabbis on what the Bible really means? They say that Jesus here, right here, was promoting... Uh, Cannibalism and vampirism. Yeah, eat my flesh, be a cannibal, and drink my blood, be a vampire. Yeah, they do. They actually, uh, I've read this stuff. So, you know, when I first came to the Lord, I wanted to study uh, the Old Testament. I thought, well, what better group to learn the Old Testament from than the Jews, right? Went to the library and started reading their books and got an education which is why I'm not a Zionist. Verily, verily, I send to you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? Ooh. Doth this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should deny him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come to me except it were given unto him of my Father. Do you know if the God the Father doesn't give you to Christ, you can't come to him? Hmm. Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So a lot of people left. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Christ is just the Greek rendering of the word Messiah. Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one 
of the 12. Okay, go to John chapter 15. I was going to read chapter 16, but got to do a little background here. Oh, let's see. John chapter 15. Let's start in verse 12. Jesus speaking. This is my commandment. Ah, oh, Jesus is giving a commandment. This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Boy, that's a sorely, sorely and sorrily lacking thing in the church, isn't it? This is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends. If, ooh, there's that if, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Listen to this. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Jesus chose Jesus has made the choice. They didn't make the choice. Jesus made the choice. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. And what's that name in the Greek? Jesus. Maybe that's why they always want you to change the Jesus to Yeshua because... Uh, if you ask the if you ask for something in the name of Jesus, he'll give it to you. If you ask for the name in Yeshua, maybe he won't. I don't know. Verse seventeen. These things I command you that ye love one another. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world. But I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. Oh yeah, they'll take your words out of context and use them against you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If they had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. Think about that. Everybody that hates Jesus hates God the Father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my Father. But this cometh to pass that the, that the word might be fulfilled that is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, and that's the Holy Spirit, but when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. When you go to a Pentecostal church, and they're, um, well, when they emphasize the Holy Spirit, remember this. Even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. The Holy Spirit is to testify of Christ. So, you know, why, why are the Pentecostals always, um, you know, emphasizing the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit's to emphasize Christ. All right, verse 27. And ye also, so also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. 
These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Oh, yeah. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. All these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Okay, let's read a little bit about Paul. Romans chapter 5, starting in verse 17, then we'll read 18, and then we'll read 20. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, and what are they talking about? Adam, Adam's fall, his offense was sinning against God, right? For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive a abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. Verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 9, and verse 33. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. And whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Did you know that rock of offense was Christ? Take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You ever wonder why they hate Paul? This is another reason why they hate Paul. Paul ties up a lot of loose ends between the Old and the New Testament. And uh, you get rid of Paul, and New Testament, a lot of it doesn't make sense. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. What are they talking about here? Moses, there was a cloud that led Israel uh, by day and then a pillar of fire by night. And what, and what did they pass through the sea? The Red Sea. Remember when Moses um, parted the Red Sea and they passed through? Well, that's what they're talking about. Verse 2, And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat, which was the manna, right? And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Now, Moses, they carried a, a, a rock, and then Moses struck the rock, and water came out. And I mean a lot of water. A lot of water came out. Because... They had to feed, I mean, you know, hundreds of thousands of people were drinking water from this rock. So it must have been a gusher, a gusher, you know. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual, spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. You know, it was Christ that was... Uh, leading Moses in them, the pillar of fire by night, the cloud in the day. Romans 16 and verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. So when you get a Jehovah's Witnesses, wit Witnesses, thank you, Super William, that um, tell you that uh, Christ was just an angel by the name of Michael, uh, that's not what Paul taught. Avoid them. 1 Corinthians 8, and verse 13. Wherefore, if meat make thy brother to offend, I will eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. You know, some vegetarians make 
some very interesting art, um, arguments. And, you know, if you got a vegetarian and you're witnessing to them and you know that eating meat's going to offend them, it's probably a good idea not to do it. Even though you have liberty, it has nothing to do with your salvation. You know, it's just common courtesy, you know. How's the saying go, when you're in Rome, do what the Romans do? Well, don't be like the wicked, satanic Romans, but, you know, if you're in a foreign country, if you're in a Muslim country, you don't want to be eating a ham sandwich, okay? What can I tell you? I mean, turkey is just fine, you know? Uh, let's see. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 32. Give none offense, neither to the Jews, nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Well, you know, if you're witnessing to a Jew and you're eating a ham sandwich in front of him, um, it's not going to be easy to win him to Christ if it's possible, okay? So, we're not to give offense needlessly. Now, if they're doing something contrary to Scripture, that's different, okay? But we shouldn't be purposely breaking the law um, of the Sabbath in front of a Jew just to make him angry or, like I say, you know, eat a ham sandwich. I don't know. That's just my opinion. You know, that's what Paul did. When Paul was in Greece, he acted like a Greece. When he was with the Jews, he acted like a Jew. When he was in Rome, he acted like a Roman. So he said he was all things to all people. Okay, 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 3. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. In the book of James, chapter 2, verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. You know, nobody can keep the whole law. Only Christ did. And even the Jews accused Christ of breaking the law, but he didn't break God's law. He broke their little man-made rules and rituals and traditions. And of course, 1 Peter 2, chapter, chapter 2, verse 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. And there's people that stumble at the word and they're disobedient. And they're appointed to something, uh, but probably not eternal life. So, all right, well, I think that's uh, enough. Just remember now that... Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they all drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. It's Chaplain Bob. Light of the World Ministries, in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.